Hey everyone, it looks like we have some good news to report on. This doesn't really come as a surprise, but Six Flags Great Adventure just announced today that El Toro is expected to reopen this spring. So as long as New Jersey's Department of Community Affairs approves El Toro for operation, we should hopefully be able to hop back on board and experience its wonderful ejector airtime. I've actually been hearing from some inside sources at the park that the coaster has been ready to go since October or November of 2021, and apparently that the park was even testing the ride sometime in December while the park was still closed to the public. So according to them, all the repairs and upgrades were completed as of last year, but the last piece of the puzzle was to have New Jersey come out and inspect El Toro and certify it for operation to the public. For those of you who weren't aware, El Toro was a very popular wooden roller coaster located at Six Flags Great Adventure in Jackson, New Jersey, and it was shut down for most of the 2021 season. On June 29th, 2021, the last car of the A train partially derailed and was reportedly dragged through the course, causing the train to run out of speed and to stop at the bottom of the climb into the final brake run. This caused an excessive amount of damage to the ride's wooden track rails, and thousands of track bolts that hold the steel running plates to the wooden track were ripped out of place. Great Adventure quickly got to work and began making all necessary repairs to the ride's track rails and replacing all the bolts that had been ripped out. I covered this in a prior video I released last August where I go into much more detail about the damage that could have occurred. Since I made that video, the park has also added black steel bracing that holds the two track rails together. The steel bracing can be found on the ride's first drop, the first large camelback, and the second large camelback. I'm not sure if it's been confirmed or not, but I'd imagine the same bracing was also placed on the infamous rolling thunder hill. So basically all the ride's ejector airtime hills where riders feel extreme uplift forces. El Toro is what's known as a prefabricated wooden roller coaster, so unlike a traditional wooden roller coaster, where all support and track pieces are hand cut and assembled by carpenters on site, El Toro's track and support pieces arrive to the job site ready to go for assembly, just like a steel coaster would. So all the support pieces are pre-cut and already have holes drilled where bolts will need to be placed and all the track rails are pre-manufactured and arrive ready to be placed on the coaster. This leads to a faster construction job and a coaster that is built much more precisely, leading to a far smoother wooden roller coaster experience. The way the track rails are manufactured also makes them much stronger than your typical wooden coaster track. So El Toro and other prefab wooden coasters built by Intamin Amusement Rides don't feature cross ties connecting the two rails together. The only time the rails are technically linked is when they attach to the structure at what's called a ledger. On a regular wooden roller coaster, you'll find thousands of these cross ties connecting the two track rails. I believe this is to help strengthen the track and also to keep the track gauge consistent, which is the distance between both rails. It could be that adding these braces to El Toro's track in moments of high negative g-forces could help to avoid the partial derailment that occurred last June. The gaps and ledgers that support the track pieces is quite large during airtime moments compared to valleys in the coaster where positive g-forces are applied instead. So this could help greatly to keep the track gauge from changing at all, and also to increase the strength of the track in those sections. This isn't the first time Great Adventure has added extra bracing to El Toro's track. In a couple of locations like the second airtime hill where Great Adventure has done extensive retracking, small steel braces were added like the ones pictured here, but they are nothing like the new rigid bracing that was recently added. Now it still hasn't been released publicly what caused the accident last summer, so these new structural braces could be a remedy to avoid another accident, or just something to improve the longevity of the ride. But either way, what's important to take home here is that Six Flags Great Adventure has continuously acted to get El Toro reopened, and it's now basically confirmed that all repairs have been completed. The last step of the puzzle that needs to take place is extensively testing El Toro, inspecting it, and then having it state certified. Now every attraction you ride at Six Flags Great Adventure goes through the process of being tested, inspected, and then being state approved every year before they can open to the public. But I'd imagine this process will be much longer and thorough for El Toro this year. So if all repairs were made correctly, which I'm sure they were, I don't foresee any additional problems arising during this process. And we should see El Toro reopen sometime during the spring. Before the pandemic, the ride would almost always open alongside the park on opening day but it could be different this year due to the more extensive testing and inspection process that will most likely be taking place. Great Adventure allocates a certain amount of money for retracking El Toro every year, so the park is used to removing and adding back track pieces during the off-season. They do this every year and almost always have the ride ready in time for the park's opening day. So hopefully with the repair work already completed, the inspection and testing process will begin early enough for the ride to open on opening day. Now I really wouldn't be surprised though if the ride did not open on time for opening day and instead later in the spring, as Six Flags can just be like that. Bizarro is being repainted and possibly rethemed, and I honestly wouldn't be surprised if that also opens later around Memorial Day. 
Anyway, I just wanted to make this quick update video to let you all know about El Toro's current status. I'd assume that the ride will be reopening with the same trains we saw in the past, but if I find out anything more, I'll let you guys know. Let's hope the ride's testing, inspection, and approval go smoothly. I certainly can't wait to get back in El Toro. Thanks for watching, everyone. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.